In this video with the Anking, I'm gonna introduce you to Anki and the Anking Step Deck, which is easily the best resource I used in medical school. Now the goals I wanna get through in this video is I wanna help you to understand why Anki is so good and then how you can use it in medical school and where that's gonna fit in in between lectures and boards and everything that you're doing. I wanna help you get off to a really good start so you can use it well and not just use it and be all confused with everything. I wanna introduce you to Anki Hub and the Anking Step Deck. The Step Deck is the pre-made deck that's incredible and Anki Hub is what allows it to be constantly updatable and always have the best resources for you. Um, also some advanced recommendations, just some tips and tricks that I think will be helpful to you. Um, I know that medical school is kind of like drinking from a fire hose at some times. So hopefully this will at least get you off to a good start and point you in the right direction. So why Anki, why is it so good? Uh, well, firstly, it is active recall, which, you know, active recall is definitely going to be better than, than passive recall. It's better to do flashcards than to read a textbook. And Anki integrates spaced repetition. That's essentially, basically, you're going to do a flashcard today, then you're going to do it tomorrow, then in three days, then in seven days, and on and on and on. And this basically makes it so you never have to go back and review anything in medical school. Um, so trust me, it's worth it. Let me open your eyes to this amazing tool. Now the pros of this is you get active recall and space repetition like I mentioned. You also have the ability to share decks. You can make an anatomy deck and share that with your classmates. You can also use the pre-made deck that I've shared. Um, there's tons of other cool tools. Um, now the add-ons in Anki is kind of like a Google Chrome extension on Google and anybody can do that because this is open source. Um, it, it, you can access the code, you can make your own add-ons. There's a lot of really cool tools out there because of this and I think that's one of the reasons that Anki continues to be one of the most popular resources. Um, now, it's free, sort of. It does cost money if you're on the um, Apple iPhone, but on desktop and Android, it's free. It is a really, 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 really good purchase. <laughs> the best thing I've purchased. So I would definitely recommend spending the money and buying it if you have an iPhone. Anyway, it works. And I've cited a research study here that they actually showed that Anki worked and the more flashcards you did, the more successful you were with your boards. Um, there's plenty of other research out there that shows very similar things. You're gonna have a better step one score. Uh, now I know it's pass fail, but everything on step one is basically going to carry over to step two. I think step two is 70%, maybe more of step one content. Um, but you have a lot more time to study your first two years. And I still remember the flashcards I did the first two years. It's amazing. Um, you'll do better on your rotations and ultimately you'll be a better doctor. I found that people perform a lot better on their rotations. They remember things. They're able to answer the pimp questions a lot better. Um, I have some videos that I'll link in the description here of how I scored really well on step one and step two. And, uh, uh, basically, I used Anki to do that and, and I share everything in these two videos here. I also have a playlist here on YouTube that goes over everything I did for each rotation and how I honored all those rotations. Now, Anki does have a lot of pros, but it also has a lot of cons. Um, uh, not a lot of cons, but it does have some pertinent ones that I want you to be aware of. One is that it's not super user friendly. That's why I made this video. That's why I actually started the whole YouTube channel is to show you what you can do um, and, and make sure that you're using it well. It does require that you're doing daily studying, sort of. There's some add-ons that allow you to do less on the weekends and such. Um, but essentially, the way the spaced repetition algorithm works, you have to be doing flashcards every single day. Um, so that, that it is a commitment, but I promise it's worth it. Uh, now, the other thing is that if you're not using it right, you don't learn how to use it well, it can certainly harm you. It's a tool and a tool that could be used really well can help you and a tool that's in, uh, inappropriately used can harm you. And it's kind of like giving a a bulldozer to a five-year-old. So be careful with this. I wanna make sure you understand how to use Anki well so that it benefits you. Now, where does it fit into your studying? Um, well, firstly, you're gonna have to kind of figure out where does this fit in when I'm doing lectures and all of that. But I wanna help you understand where does this fit in like when you're starting to learn material. So for starters, you need to learn and understand everything first. You need to understand the big picture. Where does this work? There's a bunch of resources that are really good with this. Um, for physiology, these are some really good ones. For pathology, I loved Pathoma. Um, these other resources are very good too. Um, I used Sketchy for Micro and Farm. I also used a little bit of Physio and Pixarize because they were just starting at the time, but they're fantastic resources as well. You can also use uh, lectures if you really want to. I never went to lecture personally personally, um, but, and that's, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, anyway, but I mean, you're going to use a lot of different resources. 
The point is you need to learn and understand and comprehend this stuff first, and then you move to the next step, which is memorizing and understand or retaining this stuff. That's where Anki fits in really, really well. Um, now Anki will help a little bit with the first step of learning, especially when you kind of have to learn uh, immunology where you're learning what IL-2 does versus IL-10 and all these signals in the immunology pathways or biochemistry. Um, but mostly Anki is going to help with memorizing and retaining things. Uh, the next step after you've memorized and retained things is to apply it. Now for your boards and clinical stuff, that's that's going to be practice questions. That's how you're going to apply this stuff. Um, teaching others can really help. You know, I would draw things out on a whiteboard and we would try and make sure I got the big picture and just kind of test ourselves. That's really helpful. And then ultimately clinical practice. You put this into practice, you use it on a patient, you're never going to forget it. Um, and that's really why we're doing all of this in the first place. So that's, those are the first steps. Remember, you need to learn and understand, then memorize, then apply the material. So how do you start? Uh, using Anki? That's a good question. Uh, I made this YouTube channel to help you. So there's tons of awesome information here and I'll show you, I'll tell you a little more about that in a second. There's also Reddits, uh, the Anki and Medical School Anki subreddits are fantastic. You can post on there and ask questions and people are generally um, happy to help. Uh, the best resource we put together is the, our Anki Mastery course. This will take you from not knowing anything to, uh, about Anki to really being an expert and being able to use it really well. Um, it's organized really well. It's a lot better than the YouTube channels kind of leads you one step into the other. Um, uh, and so that's what I would recommend. I'll link that here in the description. Um, if you're starting with the YouTube channel, go to the playlist tab here because I've organized everything into playlists and these are a couple playlists that I would recommend. Of course, I would appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and support us. Uh, now the best video I think that everybody needs to watch on this channel is this video about the settings. Um, I'll link it in the description again so that you can go and watch it. But this is, like I said, Anki is a tool and this is the main part of Anki, the spaced repetition algorithm. You need to be able to use this really well. So uh, briefly, I'm going to explain this. You do need to watch the video to understand all of it. But when you're doing a flashcard on Anki, you're going to be presented with four options of what you want to do. Now, this is what happens when you push the options. I realize this is kind of complicated. I'm going to try and simplify it for you. Basically, it's going to take the current interval, whatever, like the last time you saw the flashcard. If you saw it 21 days ago, that's the current interval. If you saw it two years ago, that's the current interval. And the next interval is going to be based off these calculations. A really important part of this is the ease. Um, now you'll notice that the ease factors into these equations. Um, so if you hit good, which is probably what you'll hit a lot of the time, it is going to be basically whatever the current interval is times the ease. If you hit again and hard on a card sometimes, meaning it was difficult for you or you didn't remember it at all, that's going to decrease the ease and make it so that you see that card more frequently for the rest of ever, unless you increase the ease by hitting easy on it at some point. Now, the other thing to know is that all of these are multiplied by the interval modifier, which at default is 100%. It's not going to do anything. But I found that uh, the more and more I use Anki and understand it, I do tweak this interval modifier. If there's a topic that I feel like is really difficult to me, I will decrease that to maybe 90%. Or, for example, I, I'm already fairly fluent in Mandarin Chinese because I served a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Taiwan and lived there for two years. Um, and so when I'm studying Chinese, I will often in increase this interval modifier to 120 or 130 percent because those I typically remember a little bit better than some of this medical content. Um, another place to start that I would recommend everybody do is our free mini course. It's totally free, there's no strings attached, um, and, and it goes over essentially how to make really high quality flashcards so that you can make your own flashcards. This is pertinent for everybody. Um, this is what the course looks like. I've organized it as simply as I can. It looks like there's actually a lot here, but each section is quite short, and you can probably get through this in maybe 15 minutes, but there's a lot of really, really important skills in here, and I've seen people that uh, were making terrible flashcards. They did this course, and they were able to start making really good flashcards quickly. And that will help you uh, be more efficient, but also learn better. Uh, so the Anki mastery course that I mentioned earlier, this is what is included in it. We basically take you from beginning to expert. We teach you about add-ons. We teach you about the settings. We uh, install all the add-ons for you. We have a, a Butler add-on that will install 50 other add-ons. It will automatically configure our recommended settings for, uh, for beginners. It does all of that automatically. So you don't have to spend time getting set up. Uh, it goes over everything very smoothly. So I'll, I'll link this in the description. We do have sales from time to time. If you're on our email list, that's a really good resource we put together. 
Um, another place to start is with add-ons. Now, I'm not going to go over everything because there's hundreds of add-ons out there. I think I have maybe 60 at least in my personal collection, but this is why you want them. Uh, this is an add-on that helps you add symbols. For the medical world, alpha and beta and delta and things like that do get used frequently. It's nice to be able to add symbols. Um, using a controller. This is really cool, and I'm going to mention this later, uh, but like I have this little tiny controller, and I just strap it on my wrist, and I run on the treadmill in the mornings, and I do my flashcards while I'm running, uh, but it's just really easy even if you're just sitting down. It's nice to have this little controller you can connect to your iPad, you can connect to your phone, you can connect to your computer. Uh, there's an add-on that lets you choose what the controller buttons do. Um, there's an add-on that lets you add hyperlinks. And then image occlusions, this is really cool, and this is kind of a small image in the presentation to show you what this does, but essentially you draw boxes over things that you want to occlude, and then uh, the flashcards will prompt you and say, hey, what is, what's supposed to be under this box? It's really, really useful for anatomy. Sometimes if you want to throw cards together really quickly from PowerPoint slides, it's really useful. Um, anyway, so <laughs> you're going to eat, sleep, and breathe Anki. These add-ons are going to be your best friend. I spent a lot of time just toying with them and trying to find new ones that I thought were fun. Okay, the nitty gritty. This is really cool. You've probably heard about it. It's the Anking Step Deck. It's the best deck out there. It's used by a huge majority of medical students and it's also used throughout the world. Basically, the history of this is that Bros and Cephalon made a deck and then Zonki released an even better deck and then everybody started creating offshoots of this deck and there was no way to update decks uh, four or five years ago when I started this and then I helped create a software that allows you to update flashcards. Now, it wasn't the most user-friendly software. We eventually developed Anki Hub, which is far more user friendly and allows for things to update at a crazy fast pace compared to what we were doing previously. But we basically have taken those flashcards and tagged them for every resource out there Pathoma, Sketchy Boards, and Beyond, Bootcamp, everything. Um, and we continue to do updates. There's hundreds of updates every week because of Anki Hub, and all you have to do is click a button and you get those updates um, as medical guidelines change. So how do you use Anki Hub? I'm going to go over this very briefly because there's actually an, uh, like an in-website uh, tutorial when you sign up. But basically, you create an Anki Hub account. You're going to subscribe to the deck. You do have to pay for Anki Hub first and create, uh, get a membership. And then you're going to set up your protected fields and tags. So the, uh, the reason you have this is so that you can add your own personal notes to those flashcards. You, maybe it's lecture notes. Maybe it's just to help you remember things. And you can add your notes to those flashcards without affecting the main field of the flashcards card which might update because if it updates then it would erase your notes um, so you have these fields that you can use for your own personal things then you install the Anki Hub add-on on Anki and you click this button to sync and it automatically pulls in everything and your stuff will be protected um, you can also create your own decks on flashcard you can create or on Anki Hub you can create private decks on Anki Hub uh, you can also do um, uh, optional tag groups so your school can share tags amongst each other and you can tag the Anki step deck by your school's lecture and collaborate on that it's really cool um, now how do you use it this is a question I get asked very frequently the first three to six months of medical school is going to be different so I would recommend that you first get the deck you select all of the flashcards and you suspend them and then you're going to unsuspend the cards as you learn them remember you need to learn and then memorize before and then apply so you need to learn before you're memorizing you need to learn it first and then you unsuspend the cards um, and then one of the key things you'll be doing is searching you can see I've uh, given an example here of cystic fibrosis CFTR. This was something I learned on the first day of medical school uh, that it was on chromosome 7 in this gene. So you're just going to search for things and unsuspend cards individually. Uh, if you sort by date created, they generally kind of fit into, you know, they were created in a logical order. So that's how I would recommend sorting things and then making your own cards. I made a lot of anatomy histology cards because you're going to learn all of that. And that's not in the deck because you won't be tested on anatomy on your board exams, but you do need to know it to understand, you know, what happens when anatomy goes wrong or when histology goes bad. Um, so anyway. Now, when you start getting into step one preparation, which generally is going to be like you're in blocks, you're learning about cardiology and things like that, then I would check the resource tags in the step one deck. So here's the Pathoma tag. You would go and watch the Pathoma video. If I watched the one on anemia, then I would come here and click the anemia tag and unsuspend all of those cards and ideally um, study all of those flashcards the same day that I watched the video. You'll also still do searches, like you'll, you'll find individual cards based off lectures and things like that. And you'll start doing practice questions to really solidify this stuff and apply it. 
And when you're doing step two and you're using the deck, the simple thing here is going to be use the shelf tags. Um, we've arranged everything by the shelves, uh, the shelf exams. And then you'll see I've uh, highlighted here is a sub tag of the internal medicine shelf tag. There's only step two cards. So there's a lot of step one content that is still relevant to these shelves, which is like I mentioned. Um, but you don't have nearly as much time to do flashcards. So you can uh, subdivide into just the cards that are only related to step two, which will be new content to you. And that's what I used as I was studying for, for all my shelf exams and step. Uh, and that's because I was able to remember all the stuff from step one because I'd done the flashcards so many times, even though I suspended them once step one was done. Um, now, the most important rule as you're doing all these things is to review every single day. I put a little star on here because there is caveat, you know, you can, like I said, use those add-ons that let you take days off or do less on the weekends and things like that. But if you don't do all of your flashcards every day, I'm well, one, I'm going to be very disappointed in you, but it will catch up to you. If you had 300 flashcards due today and 300 tomorrow and you miss today, you will have to do 600 cards tomorrow. Uh, so that adds up very quickly, especially when I got to the point where I was doing five or 600 flashcards a day regularly in medical school. Um, so you, you really do have to commit and do it. And the algorithm works a lot better that way. If you do it, then, uh, you know, there will be those who are just doing lecture and going to lecture and those who are doing Anki and it works really, really well. Uh, now some advanced tips and tricks. Like I said, use a controller. I absolutely love this thing. It's so cool. I will link it in the description of this video so you can buy it. Uh, there's a couple others that I like as well. You can see here's me in school using it with a projector. Um, I'm, I was using a Switch controller at the time. I've used a PS4 and an Xbox controller at times as well. Um, I have a whole Amazon store here that you can use and you can go see all the things that I recommend and a couple other things I recommend for rotations and stuff like that. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't know about, but is really useful. The Onking Note Types add-on. Uh, this is what it looks like. The Onking Note Type in the Onking Step Deck is the Onking Overhaul Note Type. Uh, I realize I just said Onking a lot, and I'm sorry. Uh, but the Onking Overhaul Note Type is the one you'll want to customize. And as you can see here, you can customize font, colors, everything. You can auto-reveal buttons. So if you always want the sketchy field to show up, or if you want the sketchy field to show up just on certain cards automatically, you can do that. You can and reorder the fields and uh, you can make it so that the sketchy field shows up on top or on bottom or physios on top or however you want to order it you can use text to speech so that your cards will read out loud to you while you're driving whatever you want to do uh, if you are driving be very careful um, now, if you need individualized help with any of this, I understand it is very difficult. We do have our Onking VIP. We have a whole bunch of experts. Uh, as part of your subscription to that, you get a bunch of beta add-ons. Uh, there's one that lets you do less flashcards on the weekend, like I've been mentioning. Uh, there's one that allows you to find you, uh, cards that are related to your, your world practice questions. And we're constantly just making new add-ons that we think would be helpful and useful. Um, so you do get access to those through the VIP subscription. You get early release YouTube videos. And if you on the higher tiers, you get email support. You can email us unlimited questions and we will help you out. If you want one-on-one -on -one help, we do have tutors available. You get someone from our expert team that will sit down and meet with you uh, over Zoom. And we also have personal statement reviewing and editing and things like that. So lots of resources for you should you need them. Um, and that's really it for this presentation. Hopefully this gets you off um, to a quick start with Anki. And if you have any questions, like I said, feel free to reach out to us. We hope that you enjoyed this and we hope you enjoy Anki.